Good morning, Koinonia Global Pillars and friends. Welcome. Praise the Lord. We have made it to the 7th of April, Sunday, 2024. Do you know how special you are? Do you know that you are not a mistake and that in this kingdom, even your mistakes can be used of the Father to become a masterpiece? You know, I've started this new vegan lifestyle, <laughs> just tried it, um, transitioning. And uh, I've noticed that there is one particular vegetable that I have used. And in two days, I've created four or five different, I've had four or five different discoveries or recipes from this one vegetable and not always on purpose. So yesterday I was sitting on my balcony and listening to some faith, a faith building message, enjoying the sun. And then I said, hmm, I'm going to take a break and get something to eat. So I came to my kitchen. Lo and behold, I realized I left the stove on on this particular vegetable, which is called a chickpea. And so I ran over, I turned the stove off. And do you know that was one of the greatest discoveries ever? So let me show you what was supposed to be um, like a, a, a bean that you soak in water and cook. It turned out it turned out to be a, a roast roast chickpeas. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> so it, they were like roasted and they were so good and they are so good, even without seasoning or anything. But then I added seasons and flavoring. To, I said, what? And right then and there, the Lord said, there are no mistakes in my kingdom. There are no mistakes in my kingdom. You are not a mistake. You may make mistakes, but when you bring yourself and everything about you to the foot of the cross, he will transform your mistakes into his masterpiece every single time. Even the compelling to get up to go to eat was orchestrated by him. So don't just go throughout your day after prayer thinking that there are random circumstances. There is nothing random in his kingdom. Hallelujah. So when we um, when we deliberately ask the Lord to uh, take our lives and everything about it and bring it unto his kingdom, he will always use it for his purposes, for his glory, because he cannot deny who he is. He cannot be other than who he is and he's good. And so Romans 8, 28, you know, he's going to work everything out for your good. Every single thing, mistakes, things done on purpose, things done to you. They're always for you, for your good, because he's a good, good father. He is getting glory out of everything. He is glory. So he cannot be opposite from what he is. So if we come into the operation or the system of the kingdom, we too will experience that in every turn. And I want to encourage you that even under attack, if the devil is attacked, if when the devil attacks, because the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. Sometimes the afflictions come from ourselves. We bring curses upon ourselves with ignorance or with actions that we shouldn't do it. Or it could be for no reason or no cause of our own. It could be the enemy using people or just coming up against you in various ways, whether it's sickness or whether it's uh, uh, getting into your mind and all of that. God will take that and use it for his glory. So that means he's going to use it for your good. Hallelujah. And um, yes, those are the chickpeas. So Think of yourself as a chickpea. What was meant for your harm, it actually turned out really good. It roasted. And even the ones that looked like they were burnt, they don't taste burnt at all. It tastes delicious. It roasted into a masterpiece from a mistake to a masterpiece. Some of you are, are so grateful for each and every one of you all over the world who pray with me. I'm, on, I'm in America, of course, the East Post in Atlanta. And so some of you are all over the world praying, sometimes live, sometimes later, whichever you choose. I'm grateful. But some of you um, 
are representing territories in which God wants you to stand in the gap and to lead prayer for your territory. And sometimes we can allow uh, a religious way of thinking or allow fear to say, well, I'm not sure if I'm ready to pray uh, in that way. I'm not sure if if I can, if I'm an expert or if I, I, I can pray so well to lead prayer. Listen, prayer is just conversation between you and the Father. Yes, there is a such thing as spiritual intelligence, which we can never outgrow, by the way, but we must start somewhere. And I want to encourage you that even in your mistakes, with your mistakes, God will still use it if you posture your heart correctly to him for him to use everything about you. That means you have to lay your crown aside, put your ego away, stop thinking about yourself. And I'm not trying to sound harsh, but really that's what it is. When we um, are more concerned with how others feel about us or think that's really a selfish way to, of thinking. We're thinking of ourselves more than his kingdom, which is him. And so when we put ourselves away and say, Lord, take over. <laughs> this is your life. It's not always comfortable, but in you is under the, the, the um, shadow of your wing. I'm protected. I'm comforted. Then you prioritize him and nothing else matters. Have you ever been in love and the worst can happen around you. You know, you could lose your job. Uh, strangers be flipping you off on the street. But when you're in love, you don't care. You're like, oh, when are you want to get home and call your boo or whoever that is. That's how we're supposed to be with the Lord. We're supposed to be in salt and love with him. Nothing else matters. You don't care about the criticism. I mean, you might, we're humans, we have feelings. But at the end of the day, we can readjust ourselves. Think about it. When you're in love, nothing else matters. Okay. It matters, but not that much. And sometimes not at all. You you just are so enthralled with him. And, and, and so um you you know that he is pouring something into you that is good by relationship. And so anything else that tries to come up against you, it can't because love is the strongest, powerful, most powerful force of all. Fear, that's why it's the opposite of fear. Fear will not creep in. You know, um, offense cannot stay. Unforgiveness, that's out the window. Who cares? I'm in love. So that's how that in love works, not just to love um, sacrificially, but to be in love with the Lord will cause you to think about your life differently and to not waste the time. God doesn't waste anything. That's why there are no mistakes. Like when <laughs> The chickpeas, <laughs> these are, they look burnt. They were not, they were supposed to be cooked and not roasted, but not one of those things are wasted because the waster, the waster is actually a wicked spirit. It's a wicked spirit called the waster and the devourer. So nothing of waste is of the kingdom. Nothing of waste is of God. He doesn't waste anything, not even your mistakes when we bring it to him. So never be afraid to step out and to pray. Even if you're not sure, you have people around you, you have a person around you you can contact and talk to first and, and just um, reach out to see how you can be involved and what your role is in God's program. Hallelujah. So now let's go ahead and get started with prayer. Please repeat after me. Father, we ask you to show us any and all areas of offense and or unforgiveness. We do not approach your throne of grace haphazardly. We do not want to be praying against your enemies while being one of them. Even if inadvertently. So the Lord asks, how can you say you love me yet hate your brother or sister? In 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. 1 John chapter 4, verses 20 through 21. Um, 
that that's kind of paraphrase. Harboring unforgiveness is a form of hate. So um, even if it's, it's something that someone did and it was they were, they were truly wrong, if we harbor unforgiveness, then that is our responsibility or irresponsibility. And it is a form, it's not love. If you can't pray for the person, that means there's still some unforgiveness there. So we do not approach the throne of grace in that way. This is a very legalistic system, the spirit realm. And so when we are approaching the throne of grace, we're, we're going delving into these areas of prayer. We are covered by the blood of Christ and doing much damage to the kingdom of darkness. Therefore, the, the kingdom of darkness is going to look for easy ways to target you, to bring to the courts of heaven something against you. So we don't want to freely say, uh, give the enemy any legal grounds for attack in an attempt to stop us from praying, okay? One of the biggest ways is through unforgiveness and offense. So we take this time before we get started in prayers to release all unforgiveness and offense. And if the Holy Spirit brings someone to you by name, then you want to forgive that person by name and ask the Holy Spirit to help you to forgive, to help you um, on that journey if, it, if that's what it takes uh, so that they can be fully released from your soul and that you can be fully free to be used of God. Hallelujah. I forgive so-and-so by name, and release all those situations to you, Lord. As I move into new dimensions and seasons, I want to have clear lines of communication with you. And I do not want to be left out of your divine program. Hallelujah. Cleanse us, oh God. Cleanse our hearts just like you did with the man who was after your own heart, David, in Psalm chapter 51, verse 10, cleanse us and renew us to have a right heart, a right spirit within us, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Our prayer points for today, we are covering Apostle Joshua Selman, Nimat, Quinonia Global, and our highlighted territory to cover is the U.S. of A, North America. Hallelujah. So if you're unfamiliar with highlighted territory, that is a new feature we're recovering, um, a territory or nation for revival and great awakening. The difference between revival and great awakening as taught to us by Apostle Selman is that revival deals more with the transformation of the individual. Great awakening deals with the transformation of a territory. So it always starts with an individual first. As he taught in uh, recently in, at Harvard University, the power of one, the significance of one. It was only one man who was at uh, the man of Gadara who, who transformed 10 cities. One prostitute, or I shouldn't call her a prostitute, I'm not sure. So one woman who was living in adultery, searching for love in all the wrong places, who found Jesus, received Jesus, and transformed an entire territory. One widow who listened to the voice of a prophet and therefore could employ her sons where they always had a, a replenishment system of income and also changed her entire territory because she had such an influx of oil that not only were people consuming it, but they saw her success and they too began businesses. So she not only employed people, her sons who worked for her, but she was a leader in the area of business because she uh, encouraged other people to become business owners in her territory, which changed her economy. One person, not always a man, sometimes a woman. And, and as in the realm of the spirit, we are called sons of God, all of us. This is man, right? And so that's how our God loves us so much. He will use one person, revival in our hearts, an alignment, adjustment to his Holy Spirit to transform those in our immediate circle, which will be like a ripple effect. You know, like when you throw a pebble in a pond and there's a ripple effect, one pebble will transform yourself, your heart, 
to those closest to you, your family, your acquaintances, your friends, and they tell their friends and they influence and impact their friends and they influence and impact the nation around them. So that is why we added highlighted territories that we pray for every week. So, so far we um, most recently have prayed for the country of Ghana, especially since, uh, no, yes, Ghana. We've covered Nigeria, of course, and we also covered South Africa. And I praise God that in our small prayer family right now, we have people who represent, who are from each of those soils to cover that land. I believe that Abraham, as much as he was a good friend of God, a friend of God, as much as he had negotiating powers to, to uh, save, attempt to save Sodom from um, judgment, he could not do it successfully because he was not from there. So you can intercede on behalf of another. You can intercede on behalf of the land. But if there is not a man on the land to couple your their, the, 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 the prayer with yours, then the Holy Spirit can only hover. So there are rules, laws, protocols, prerequisites, and regulations in order to see that the word that is settled in heaven, Psalm 1889, can be manifest in the earth. You can't just have one part and not the other. And that goes together like with anything that um, he's called us to be, John 15, 8, John 15, 16, to be fruitful. It takes more than one um, side to be fruitful, right? In order to bring about the fruit of the earth, it takes collaboration. That's why he calls us the body. Christ is the head and we are the body. By the way, before we get started in our prayers, I want to correct myself. I apologize. I think last week I mentioned how when we're seated at the right, as we are seated at the right hand of the father with Christ Jesus, it's like when there are two married couples and you see how they each have a throne, the bride and the groom and, and the natural, you'll see that that's incorrect. That's incorrect. Why? Because Jesus is the head, right? You don't have a bodiless head sitting in one chair and then the body sitting in another chair. No, it's not two separate thrones. It's one seat because we are one body. We are one with Christ. So think of it as, um, I guess it would be inappropriate in the natural to have the wife sit on the lap of her husband. But <laughs> really, when it comes in the spiritual, that's what we are. We are one with Christ. He doesn't have a, we're not a headless body <laughs> that is perverse. That's something you see at Halloween, right? He is the head and we are the body and we're sitting with him. When it says sitting with him, it doesn't mean like a separate chair. No, we're literally him. So we're sitting with him right next to on the right hand of the father so i want to make that correction now we have the right consciousness we're not way over here in another chair and uh no 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 we are one with him in his chair because we are of the same body and so we need to be cognizant that uh we we uh, are important to each other and therefore, it's going to take intercessory prayer on behalf of others, but it's going to take people on the land. That's you. You are on the land. That means you carry a special grace for your land to pray so that when um, the sperm comes with the egg, it can bear fruit of life in your territory. That's great awakening. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you so much for our prayer points today, for Apostle Selman, Koinonia Global, the local assemblies worldwide that are coming together to worship you, and lastly, for America. We cover Apostle Joshua Selman and Matt's health. We bless him from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Hallelujah. Everywhere he goes, we pray he continue to be in league and covenant with your creation, Father, to carry out your, divil your, your divine will. We cover his Results, as in Psalm chapter 65, verse 11, contemporary English version. Psalm chapter 65, verse 11, CEV, describes you, Father. May it describe the destiny of Apostle Selman as well as he follows in your footsteps. 
everywhere his feet touches the earth, a rich harvest is gathered, a rich harvest of souls, a rich harvest of resources, a rich harvest of witty ideas, opportunities, and exceeding great rewards. Hallelujah. We pray for the protection of Apostle Selman by the blood of the eternal covenant that speaks better things than Abel. We come up against any wicked spirit that will come up against the chosen vessel of God's divine program. We pray a hedge of fire around him, his family, his team, his colleagues. We petition on behalf as his results are evident from the transformation of our own lives. Therefore, as he is proven to be a good steward of your gifts, talents, graces, and resources, we ask that you preserve him, advance him, propel him to greater heights, because as he rises, your body is sure to rise by your spirit in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We lift up the beautiful body of Koinonia Global in Zaria, Abuja, and worldwide. Today, we pray that there be undistracted, uh, un, un, no spirit of distraction during worship. All of our hearts are aligned to pray, to worship, and to receive of a divine encounter. We pray that amongst the brethren, there is greater respect of all appointed spiritual shepherds that you have appointed over your body, according to Jeremiah chapter 315, those spiritual chefs to feed us a balanced meal to help us throughout the week. But we can only receive that. We can only receive the benefits of it by receiving the proponents of the vessels that give it. So we pray for a greater respect of all the spiritual shepherds of Koinonia Global. And according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12, 13, so that we can receive every good thing that you have for us through those vessels. We pray that Koinonia Global brethren devote more time to scripture based earnest fervent holy spirit empowered prayer according to colossians chapter 4 verse 2 colossians chapter 4 verse 2 and that we all boldly share jesus with our neighbors unashamedly but with wisdom care and spiritual uh, intelligence and love according to acts chapter 4 verse 12 May we all walk in greater consciousness that we are spirit, thus remembering to worship you in spirit and in truth. John chapter four, verse 24, not showing up the church to show off, not trying to be on camera, not trying to uh, let ourselves be revealed, but letting Jesus be revealed and glorified in and through our lives to receive of the Holy Spirit that divine encounter so that we can be transformed, revival, and be used to transform the world around us in earth and then on earth. Great awakening. We pray for all the local assemblies worldwide. We pray a special prayer for grace, peace, and mercy for our own Koinonia Global Pillars and Friends pastors. That includes the Fabian family of Tanzania, the Taylors of USA, Kentucky. Thank you, Lord, for a marvelous and successful missions trip that Sister Sandy Lynn Taylor had recently in the Philippines with her prayer team. We thank you that you brought them back safely uh, last week to the United States, that they're now reunited with their families, that you've kept and preserved their families while you called them to be on duty in missions work, and that you would realign them to everything that you have them to do here, and that all that was done there, they brought back even better, um, uh, better things for their respective countries uh, worldwide that they returned to, and that any and, and every demon looking to come up against their families as a result of work, we come up against that retaliation by the blood of the eternal covenant. We make them stealth in the spirit to continue your work, Lord. And I pray a special covering of uh, the blood of Jesus over every person here praying that we are also covered by your blood and made stealth in the spirit. I decree and I declare there'll be no retaliation of the enemy for us doing what God has called us to do. We are not only called, but we're sent. We're doing things in the order that God has called us to do so we can rest assured in love that supersedes fear that we are in his will and we will reap the results as we uh, gain forth 
spiritual territory with prayer in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let's pray in the spirit. Rocosa breaka shakida Rocos the kid at a break, she kid at a broke, she kid at a broke, she kid at a Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You're worthy. Thank you, Lord, that your will be done. Your kingdom come. Now for our weekly highlighted territory of USA. United States of America, North America, especially as it relates to the upcoming apostolic conference that will happen July with Koinonia Global, of course, hosted by our dear apostle um, Selman. We thank you, Father, that you have us on your heart and your mind. We are never outside of your eye. We are the apple of your eye. You see us as if nobody else exists, but yet you are so powerful that you see all of us simultaneously to answer the prayers of each nation because we're coming together to worship. Every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. And just like you transform the hearts of the individual first, you transform the hearts of individual cities, individual regions, individual territories, and you expand and then you expand and you expand. And so thank you, Lord, in your operation, how you work. We thank you, Lord. We call every spirit that you have orchestrated to be there, to be there. You father of spirits, according to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 9 can orchestrate spirits in your beautiful, what I call orchestra. You create a divine symphony that brings together a beautiful song unto your ears, just like in Zephaniah chapter three, verse 17. You rejoice over us in song, and that's where we get the example to rejoice back unto you. May our lives bring about a beautiful divine symphony, an orchestra of music unto your ears that also resonate with our prayers coming together as we come together as a beautiful instance unto your nostrils, Lord, and a beautiful tapestry of colors of all the nations come together unto your eyes, Father. We thank you for it that we are made in your image and likeness so that we can relate to you and that we can not only see your love, but receive your love. So Lord, may your love just be dispersed throughout the earth and dispersed throughout the United States and give people a compelling to want to know about you more, to want to 
uh, register and come. Who is this Jesus? I know I grew up knowing Jesus and people teach the best way they know how. People know the best way they know. But this dimension of the Lord, I've not, not seen yet. And so therefore we prepare our hearts and minds to receive a greater dimension of you through the Koinonia Global Apostolic Conference coming up summer, this summer. Hallelujah. Prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, prepare the spirits of the individuals. And, and we ensure that we what, what we take, we will not just take it for that moment, not just to be to feel good, because we know that the enemy is the master of the sense realm. So we don't stay uh, in the sense realm. We use it as a tool to elevate us even more to receiving of the spirit realm, Lord. So we ask that you prepare our hearts here in the States to receive more of your spirit, not by negating the emotions, but by using them as a tool to receive more of you, to have a memorable experience, to aid in our individual transformation, to love our brothers and sisters more, to see a positive transformation in our school system, but our health systems also reflect the coming of your glory through this apostolic conference. May it be like that pebble in the pond that I talked about earlier that expands every ripple farther and farther and farther out. And everywhere that apostles' feet touches, just like at your feet in Psalm 65, 11, there is a rich harvest gathered. So we call forth that harvest now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the harvest of souls to come back into your bosom. Lord, you are again the Father of spirits. We began with you as spirits. You spoke into our destiny then, Jeremiah 29, 11, you were our Abba father before you introduced us to our earthly father and mother. Therefore, you told us that you have a destiny for us. You have thoughts of peace and not harm. And when we got introduced to this earthly realm, we came up against all types of devices, iniquities of ancestral past, our own choices that deviated away from your word. Whatever the case was, it deviated away from you. Therefore, we were deviated away from ourselves in our destiny, Lord. Bring our souls back to you. Bring our spirits back into your bosom. We call forth those spirits now to be prepared. And every block, hindrance, demonic block or hindrance trying to come up against the destiny of those people, even physical or natural, we come up against it with the blood of Yeshua HaMashiach. That is salvation, the Messiah, the anointed one who has anointed us to pray, your will be done, your kingdom come. So they will be there, whether online or on site whether people around the world on site online they will be there and they will receive hallelujah everything goes smoothly from top to bottom every nook and cranny we cover the grounds of the facility dickie's um uh, arena, wherever we're going to be. We cover it with the blood of Jesus. May the blood of Jesus seep out and search the soil of the grounds. Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus, search the soil of the grounds. Anything lurking underneath that would try to tamper with the foundations of your work, Lord, we come up against it and we obliterate it by the power of the Holy Ghost so that there is peace all around, peace all around. And with that element of peace, we are in a place to receive more of your glory, your kabod, your heaviness, your presence, so that we can truly experience you, encounter you in a greater dimension to be transformed and to transform the territories around us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father, that you love us with an everlasting love. The name America is not in the Bible, but the, the it's in your heart. And everything that is supposed to be there is not there because a lot of things are hidden, just like your agenda, Father. Because if we knew everything that you were doing, we might sabotage it inadvertently. We might speak it forth or, or, or tell the world about certain things that you don't want the enemy to know because if he knows certain things, then he will come up against it. So there are certain treasures that are hidden for a reason. And you give us a lamp into our feet and a light into our path, but you don't show us the bright light of all of your glory to see the full picture because that number one teaches us how to remain in faith, to rely on you step-by-step step, and not to think we're doing anything on our own. But number two, 
It is a form of correction and protection so that we do not blab out all the mysteries um, and, and allow the enemy to, to tamper with your program. So we thank you that even when we don't understand your ways, we don't have to understand to trust you and to walk in faith, walk in obedience unto your, your son, Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, we ask you to show us how to do that now. Show us how to bring in the end gathering in obedience. Show us how to prepare our hearts for you, not just for this moment or that particular two or three days, but for all eternity. Show us how to prepare the generation, Psalm chapter 145, verse four, so that they would continue praying praising your name. And just like we mentioned earlier, there are no mistakes in your kingdom, even when we make mistakes. When it comes into your presence, every mistake is a masterpiece. So even if we are making mistakes, Lord, may the future generations not pick it apart, but they see it as something to build upon and what and which our apostle has taught us is progressive revelation. And so we don't want to hide behind fear and, and this disguise of religiosity and not praying, Lord. May we come forth, bring forth more intercessors, more people who are praying boldly, unashamedly for your goodness. And yes, doing their due diligence by studying the word, meditating, prayer and fasting consistently, not just religiously, but with purpose, intent and power by the backing of your spirit and your word compliancy. So thank you, Lord, that you're teaching us methodically with disciplines and that you are showing us how to do it together in love so that we can be an effectual body. A body separated cannot move. So as we come together and knowing what our role is being secure in who you called us to be, whether it's a pinky or an eyeball. We know our place. And therefore, as we come into place, we can move and move and be prepared as your bride for your son, Jesus Christ, to arise and come back for us. Thank you, Lord, for revival. Thank you, Lord, for great awakening. We know that today is a special day of worship for local assemblies around the world, as well as it will be tonight for Kononia Global. We give you all the glory and the praise for the opportunity to pray your will be done, for the opportunity to live out your kingdom and learn of your mysteries and to unlock these victories for our lives. There is a such thing as rest roundabout. Again, do not get caught up or hung out in your mistakes. The Lord takes our mistakes and transforms them into masterpieces. He has all the pieces of the puzzle. And it may look ugly. It may look oblong. It may look awkward by itself. But when we come together as a body glued by the Holy Spirit, it is a beautiful masterpiece after, after all. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your your power. Thank you, Lord, for your word. That is also an example to see how when we put the Old Testament with the new, the grace with the law, and everything is all one and everything belongs together, that's when it's beautiful, not out of context, not out of joint, not out of ligament, but together in love, unity, by sacrifice, of sometimes sacrificing who we are and our comforts in order to come together, we can then see we have better than sacrifice. We have satisfaction. That sacrifice has a reward. 2024 is the year of exceeding great reward. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word and for this prayer session of prayer. Just give him a wave offering and say, hallelujah, halal Yeshua, he's worthy. I love you. I love you. I love you. I encourage you to take communion on your own time. Do it as often as possible. In the mighty name of Jesus, everything that was mended, excuse me, everything that was broken in our lives is mended. When we come into the consciousness of communing with the Lord, we just commune with him in prayer. But by taking uh, communion, yeah. that helps us to recognize that the other truths of our lives in our physical health, our mental health, our emotional health, our health as a body of Christ, our health as a body, as a, as a prayer family, body as a Koinonia Global Church, all of those things, everything that's broken can be mended. Things get broken over the week. So we took you to communion last week. There's a lot that transpires in seven days. There's a lot that can transpire in seven hours, seven minutes. So it's not just a, uh, just, you know, as a magic pill. No, it's a 
recognition of what we have an inheritance as sons and daughters of the most high and so just as you would take your vitamins every day or if you are sick you would take pills that doctors prescribe well the great physician has prescribed us communion in multiple different ways i was at the 4 52 a.m this morning and the actually at 4 37 a.m i hear birds out there like they don't, they don't wake up with groggy voices. They're chirping and I'm like, what the world are they chirping about this early? But they're communing with the father. That's what I'm convinced. That God, and even in his creation with the birds has shown us examples of what it means to get up early with the Lord to commune. We have different prayer watches, right? And they're dedicated for different areas of our lives. So we do midnight prayer watches. A lot of our warrior angels are accessible to us then. They're always accessible, but that there are certain hours that God has designated for us as those who are watchmen on the wall using the prayer watches. Well, in the early hours of the morning, that is a time of peace solitude. Jesus went out in the early time. That is a time when the birds are talking with the Lord and they're talking with themselves. Everybody okay? They are communicating commune young. So you want to be in a state of communing with the Father in multiple ways, in prayer, in meditation, in the word, always praying without ceasing. It doesn't mean always praying out loud or you're at work or at the grocery store, but you are, you have a spirit of prayer because you trained yourself to always be communing with him. His, his, you have the mind of Christ that's renewed to the mind of him. So in everything that you do, yes, always be praying in this, uh, praying and communing with him and everything in, in, that you do. And don't be concerned with your mistakes. Step out boldly for Christ, share the love of Christ, whether it's a smile, a hug, a word, go touch somebody, ask somebody if they need prayer. Be spiritually intelligent and ask the Lord before you just approach anyone or do anything. But there's going to be a time when we must step out, including here. I want you to keep in mind again that you are here for a reason. You represent your territory. You will be leading prayer for the great awakening of your land and the great revival of our hearts. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you so much for praying with me and match flames. In the mighty name of Jesus, pray. amen. Thank you, Sister Clara, for being here from Nigeria. You are a gem. Thank you for making it live. And for all those who are praying afterwards, God bless you. Bye-bye for now. Be your best you.